Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you with us again. Uh, happy May as we find ourselves in a new month and now into another week of being unable to gather as we usually do. But we have been blessed over the past several weeks to gather in this manner. So it is our joy uh, for Pastor Paul and I to be with you this morning, whether you're gathered around your family dinner table or you're gathered in your living room or you're watching from your mobile device, whatever the case might be, we invite you once again to come and join us as we gather around God's word and hear his promises and reassurance once again. As we gather together this morning, we do so in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've probably been in home and in your homes for a long time, and most likely you've had a discussion or two between either you and your spouse, or you and your kids, or if you have more than one child at home, between one or two or three or four children, whatever the case might be. And usually when those discussions happen, there's the issue of blame. Our kids have, have thrived in this season. There's been a lot of things that we've seen them grow in, but we've seen them grow relationally as well when it comes to how do you handle conflict. And in the back of my mind as I've watched this and kind of engaged in it myself, these words from Jesus come to mind. From Luke chapter 6, beginning at verse 39, Jesus tells a parable and says, Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself don't see the log that is in your own eye? Jesus goes on and says, you first have to remove the log from your own eye before trying to tease out the speck from your brothers. When we come into this time of confession, it's an opportunity for us to look at the log, not the speck. Christ calls us to be honest about who we are and our sinfulness. He already knows, but that honesty actually enables us to have the correct posture to engage conflict and to grow in relationships with others. So in these next moments of silence, I invite you to confess your sins, the logs that are in your eye, keeping you from not only seeing someone else clearly, but seeing our Lord clearly as well. We confess in a moment of silence. It's God's word that shows what those logs are in our eyes. And when he removes those, the first thing we realize is how much we're loved. We're reminded from 1 John, we love because he first loved us. So my declaration to you is that you are loved. You are forgiven. Your sin, the log, has been taken care of. It's been removed and dealt with. And now, having received the love of God, we now can love each other. So as you begin this week, go knowing that you're forgiven, a forgiven child of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, 
the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and victorious Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We're living in constant tension. I was reminded of this as I just finished reading Steve Ambrose's book about World War II. He was describing the horrible terrors that our soldiers in the army faced here during the Battle of the Bulge during December of 1944. See, the Allied troops had just pushed the Nazi soldiers off the beaches in Normandy, France here, and then all across the country of France, recapturing France from the Nazi soldiers here. It had taken six months of incredible warfare for them to push the Nazis out of France here. But now it was December of 1944, and the American troops had just entered into the western portion of Germany. Now, friends, winters in Germany are a lot like winters in Minnesota. They're brutally cold. In Germany, along the Rhine River, they get more snow there than we typically get here in Minnesota. And there at night, temperatures can drop from 10 to 20 degrees below zero Fahrenheit during the evening here. And American GIs were sleeping outside in foxholes that they had to dig each night. And these were only 12 to 18 inches deep in the ground, just low enough for their body to lay into here because that's all the deeper they could dig them with their pickaxes and small shovels for that soil. It was frozen like a rock. Thus, the American soldiers were basically sleeping outside without any protection over them. Therefore, they were frozen to the core. But that wasn't the reason why they were unable to sleep at night. Stephen Ambrose writes, sleep deprivation was a universal experience. Two, three, at the most four hours of fitful sleep was about it. He continues, no matter how sleepy a man was, he lived in constant tension. Why? Well, the men shivered in their foxholes, attempting to stay alert, straining to see, straining to hear, straining to stay awake. They would chew gum or tobacco. They had nothing to do except to think about the precarious position they were in. Friends, in the darkness of night, these soldiers' young nerves were on life's edge. One mistake would mean instant death, not just for you, but for all of the soldiers around you in your unit. Thus, that piece of snow falling from a nearby pine tree at night, it would strike terror in their minds. They were thinking, was that just snow, or were the German soldiers sneaking up during the darkness of night? Private Arthur Lindbold said, you always slept with one eye open. He says there was no moving around. You never talked to another soldier in the foxhole next to you, for any noise could give your position away. You never got used to it. You never got used to it. Are you kind of feeling somewhat to that extent today? I'm still not used to the threats of living under the COVID virus. 
This isn't warfare against the Nazis in Germany, but it is a war between life and death. This is why our country has been shut down. We're not sleeping in foxholes outside, but we're locked into our homes each day. We're not dodging bullets or grenades or bombs from the enemy, but we're trying to avoid the breath of a total stranger. Six feet away in the stores, 15 feet distance if you're following a runner. We're wearing face masks when we enter into Target or other stores. Playgrounds are closed when the kids really need them. College kids have had to return home. As one of them told me in my phone call to him last week, he said, I sometimes feel like I'm living in a foxhole with my parents. <laughs> I didn't ask for his parents' reaction to that. Yes, fear. Fear not from the Nazis or of other soldiers, but of sickness and death from a virus that's killed hundreds of thousands of people around the world. We're tired. We're still at risk. Many of you may not be sleeping well at night. Lieutenant Glenn Gray in his classic book titled The Warriors, he has a name for all of this. He calls it the tyranny of the present. The tyranny of the present. And I find that to be fascinating because it's so true. He described these soldiers, and to an extent, you and I today. He said, in a foxhole, the past and more importantly, the future do not exist. The only thing in the world that matters is the present. You don't care about the past because that's gone and you've survived it. You don't care about the future because the future is so unknown. It's so unpredictable. It seems so distant. We're locked into the moment and we have to be because we have no other choice. Unless, as this soldier told Ambrose, we were so helpless and all alone, and there was nothing we could do. The time went by very slow. I was alone, frightened, forgotten, and scared. So I prayed to God. I prayed to God. My friends, there are blessings in this COVID virus. Are you recognizing and appreciating them? Let's talk about prayer for a moment. I feel the need to pray more now with so much out of my control, don't you? Yeah, I've felt this lack of power you know, from our government, from our medical system, from our economy or other things that I used to put more trust in, don't you? you know, I've felt alone at times. My sleeping pattern has changed. I know that I'm not in control of the past, the present, or the future, aren't you? So maybe these soldiers from 75 years ago, stuck in the foxholes of Germany, maybe they have something to teach us or to remind us of. For Jesus prayed this prayer for his disciples in his final moments with them before he was arrested and crucified. In fact, it's the longest prayer by Jesus recorded in the Bible. See, Jesus knew that each one of his disciples was going to be arrested. They were going to be thrown into prison and beaten and executed for sharing the gospel of Jesus around the world. But Jesus didn't pray to his father to remove them or to shield them from the attacks of their enemies. No, Jesus prayed for something else. We read from John 17. Jesus says, I am coming to you now, 
but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Jesus prayed two things for them, and I'll list them backwards. One is he prayed that they would be protected, that they would be protected against whatever harm might come against them. And that same God who protected them and who protected the soldiers in Germany, he'll protect us right here and now. But secondly, Jesus prayed that they might have the full measure of my joy within them. Joy, even in the midst of such suffering. Joy, even when we've got the uncertainty of knowing what the future might hold. Joy that comes through prayer and our faith in the Lord. Joy that results each time God speaks to us through the scriptures. Joy that lives within us, one of the blessings of our baptisms here. Joy that comes through this prayer that Jesus prays for you and for me. And thus, my friends, may you experience joy as we continue through this battle. May God continue to protect you and your loved ones. And may your bed be more comfortable than any foxhole as we balance tension with our faith through prayer. Amen. Having heard from God's word, we now take this opportunity, even remotely from wherever you happen to be, to gather together the resources that the Lord has given to us. For those of you that have joined us in ministry through giving online, we thank you so much for your generosity and ask that you continue to come alongside us in this way. If you'd like to join us in the Lord's work in and through Christ Victorious, you can click on the link below or you can go to ChristVictorious.org and then the top right corner select CV Giving to set up online giving. Or if you'd feel more comfortable, you can mail your offering and those resources to our church office. We continue at this time in prayer. Would you please bow your heads and join with me? Gracious Father in heaven, you have placed us in attention in our world between the difficulties that we experience, but yet the joy of knowing who you are. That joy lies within the place where we find ourselves now. Sometimes it does feel like a foxhole. When we look to ourselves, where is our hope? Where is our peace? What does tomorrow hold? And yet your word speaks. We thank you for these words, this prayer from Jesus in John 17 that reminds us that you ask that we might experience your joy while we are here. Father, may you overwhelm us with your joy, the joy of being your children, of being dearly loved, of being set free, of being called to serve those around us. Father, we pray that your hand of provision and protection would be upon many in the medical realm who are seeking to bring healing to others and provide protection and medical care. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will be with our governmental leaders from a federal level all the way down to our local municipalities, that you would give them wisdom on how best for us as citizens of our country, of our nation, or our state, to respond to the coronavirus. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would bring this to an end. We know that you can. Nothing is beyond your power or control. Lord, while we wait and while we take steps and adjust, we ask that you would give endurance and strength to us individually, as families, as husbands and wives, as followers of Jesus. 
May, we, may our eyes look to you, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy you had endured the cross, that we might know your joy to the full. Father, thank you that we can pray to you anywhere, at any time, about anything. Holy Spirit, may you move us to prayer throughout this week. These prayers and the ones that we carry in our hearts and minds, we lift up to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you head out into your week, it is our prayer that the joy of Jesus goes with you and that you know that he is always one step ahead, leading before you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace now and always. Amen. <music>